What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video. I know it's been a while since I've been posting, but you know what, working 45, 48 hour weeks or almost 50 plus hour weeks is, it's a killer. It's really getting to you, you know, it gets to your boy Norn Rad 89 Sometimes I don't want to freaking do videos, it sucks. I like doing videos, but sometimes when you work, then you got house stuff, then you got kids, then you got appointments and dates and all kinds of stuff going on. You kind of feel like, Bleh! so it went to that point where I wasn't posting recently. That's why I haven't really posted anything in about six days. And these two videos that I have planned right now are going to be low-key, very minimal editing because I don't really want to do a lot of editing right now. <laughs> so today we have full gear happening today, AEW's pay-per-view 2024. I wanted to do a wrestling video content one, and I have the card right here the main card there are two matches that i believe that are going to be on zero hour I'm not going to talk about those matches we're just going to jump right into the main card and i'm going to give you my opinion on who's going to win and who's going to leave a loser <laughs> so today we're going to go into right into jay white versus hangman adam page which me i am loving this feud i enjoyed this feud i think hangman adam page is doing some of the best character work he's done i really didn't like him at all at all and i've really grown to like him over this course of the last like three months and jay white's one of my favorites and i think jay white plays off of adam page very well I want Jay to take the victory in this one, but I think Hangman Adam Page is going to take the victory, basically because Jay White has gotten, I think, three wins over Adam Page recently, like or like the last three matches that they've had, I think Jay White took the victory in each one of those, so I think Hangman's time is now to take a win. Next up, we have two bros going against each other. We have Kyle Fletcher taking on Will Ospreay. Kyle Fletcher has gone to the dark side. He has joined the Don Callis family and has basically left Will Ospreay's side and said, like, I don't need you. I don't want to be associated with the United Kingdom or anything like that. So we're going to duke it out. We're going at it. And I think this is the time because these two put on a clinic, an absolute beautiful match a few months back, and it was amazing. This time I'm going Kyle Fletcher. I think Kyle Fletcher needs the push that getting that villain victory over Will Ospreay and that there's more story to be told. So I think you don't want to have your baby face just take the victory and, you know, beat up Kyle Fletcher and be like, you know, oh, dude, I'm still the top dog. I'm still the best. You can't do that. You got to have Kyle Fletcher come in as the heel, take down Will and have a little bit more story to be told later on. Next up, we have the tag title match, and that's the Private Party defending against the Outrunners, the Kings of the Black Throne, and the Acclaimed. And in terms of who I think is going to win, this one could go multiple different ways. I think it's kind of cool that they did this, the Fatal 4-Way thing for the tag titles, because I feel like you could make a case for every single one of these tag teams. King of the Black Throne, I mean, like, they're they're great together. Brody King and Malachi Black, that's just a fantastic pairing. The Acclaimed, I still like the Acclaimed, but I don't think they're going to win because I think they're actually moving towards a split up. And the Outrunners have been growing on people in terms of popularity. So I think Private Party, though, is going to keep this. I think Private Party is going to retain the tag titles. Next up, we have Kanosuke Takeshita, and he's going to be defending his AEW International title against Ricochet, and I'm taking Takeshita for the win. I really don't think it's his time to lose. I love Ricochet, and I think what he's doing in AEW is really cool, but I think he's he's just running into Kanosuke Takeshita at the wrong time because this boy is on, on another level, and I think he's one of the best, and I think he needs to keep the international title and keep it running and have some more premier title defenses in the future. Next up, we have Jack Perry defending his TNT title against Daniel Garcia, and I'm going Jack Perry on this one. We could go Daniel Garcia and maybe have, you know, the babyface come out with the win, but I think I'm leaning more towards Jack Perry because I think we're going to push Daniel Garcia more towards the heel perspective. He actually might join Death Riders. I know John Moxley's Death Riders are totally ringing through right now. Blackpool Combat Club is in shambles. I don't know if you guys know that. I'm a Blackpool Combat Club for life, but they are totally in shambles right now, and John Moxley's running around with the Death Riders, and I think Jack Perry's going to beat Daniel Garcia, and that's going to lead Daniel into going more towards that heel route. Next up, we have Chris Statlander going against Mercedes Monet for the TBS title. And Mercedes, I don't think she's had the most fantastic TBS title run, but I think, to be honest, this is her time to lose. I know that might suck to hear from Mercedes or Mercedes fans, but I think Chris Statlander being this would be her second time. Yeah, her two, she'd be a two-time TBS champion now. And I think Chris Statlander's got the, she's got the power. She's got the, uh, she's got the character and the persona. And I think her beating Mercedes would go a long way. And that's like my major, major title switch going on today for me. 
One other match that we have on the card is MJF versus Roderick Strong. I actually almost forgot about this one just because this is kind of forgettable. Not to knock Roderick Strong. I think Roderick Strong is fantastic. He's amazing in the ring. One of the best technical wrestlers they have in AEW. MJF is an absolute stud and a star. I just think the story, the buildup, what is happening right now with this going on, and just I'm not that invested. And I'm going to go MJF for the victory on this one. Next up, we have Swerve Strickland going against Bobby Lashley. I know, big news, everybody. Bobby Lashley has moved over to AEW. He took the Hurt Syndicate with him. We have MVP, Shelton Benjamin, Bobby Lashley. And I think Bobby Lashley being his first pay-per-view performance and his first pay-per-view with AEW, I don't think he's going to take a loss on this one. It sucks to say that because I'm a Swerve's house all day. I love Swerve Strickland. I'm very big on him. But I think... Like I said, Bobby Lashley needs the victory more to push the Hearst Syndicate into a more, you know, you know, potent storyline that people want to see. Because right now, I would say, with the Death Rider stuff going on, like I love that. I love John Moxley and all the stuff that he's trying to do, and I think there's more layers to that story. So for me, it's the Death Rider storyline, and right now, the Hurt Syndicate joining in and trying to recruit people. Those are my two favorite storylines going on in AEW. Now we have our main event, John Moxley, the leader of the Death Riders, defending the AEW world title against Orange Cassidy. And you know, if anybody, if you've been following and you've been watching my AEW videos or my wrestling videos, you know I'm very huge on John Moxley and Orange Cassidy. To be honest, them two are probably my two favorite wrestlers in AEW. So right now we have... You know, John Moxley going against Orange, and it's it's my A and B. You know, it's my t one and two, like going against each other. Which one do I think is going to win? I can see Orange Cassidy taking the victory, like because I don't think that'll hurt John Moxley. I really don't. But I think there's more to be told with the babyface storyline, and I think the Death Riders are going to have more. Like I said, there's going to be more layers to this storyline, and I think John's going to win. They're going to eventually, like, kind of, you know, linger or lure Daniel Garcia and some other people to the dark side. And then we're going to have possibly another baby face that might show up at this pay per view, I think, to kind of back up Orange Cassidy and the others and be like, no, we got some more people here. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe we'll see Kenny Omega. I don't know. There's a lot of rumors going around and people that might show up at Full Gear because that seems to be AEW's most popular thing now is that they're ending. The pay-per-views on a sour note, but also kind of showing up. There's been people that have, you know, been introduced over the last couple pay-per-views. So I think someone's going to have, we're going to see a returning face come back. But thanks for sticking around with me, all This was a quick one. Like I said, minimal editing. Just giving my thoughts on the AEW Full Gear pay-per-view. I wanted to get this one out because that is tonight. So at, I think 4.30 p.m. my time, it will be starting the, you know, the hype show and everything. And then at 6 o'clock my time around 8 p.m. Eastern time, I believe. No, yeah, I believe so, is, is when it starts. Look it up. You can find it. It's on Triller TV. I order it on DirecTV and stuff. You can look all this stuff up. I know, like I said, my mind's all over the place because I've been working so much. But thanks for sticking around with me, all Like the video. That definitely helps out the channel. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and have that notification bell. Pokes so are notified anytime I drop a video. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out. I even forgot to go peace out. <laughs>